I like to think it goes back as far as 1952 when I was working at the Welch Medical Library and we had an honorary committee of consultants, one of whom was Dr. Chauncey Leake. And one of the things that he said to me, among many others, was that I should pay special attention to review articles. And so I studied very carefully, I did a kind of linguistic analysis of review articles. And as a result of that, I was looking for a structure that would be able to record uh, indexing of review articles. First, SCI was strictly a print product. Although we were using punch cards to create the index, but it was strictly a printed product. The next phase came with the introduction of the CD-ROM. And so we then put the SCI on a series of compact discs, which were used for a decade or more. In fact, I know a few people still use them. And it had a lot of features in it that, that even to this day are kind of difficult to implement by other technologies. And then in around in the 1970s, approximately 70, 1972. Uh, Dialogue and uh, uh, Dr. Summit uh, had developed the online access to databases. And we then made our database available online. And that began the online era. Well, first of all, you didn't have to spend hours writing out uh, references that you found when you had to do a search in the print index, and it was uh, quite a task to use the print indexes. The only p persevering people uh, would do it, but it's amazing when you think back that how much time people did spend doing such searches. And then later, of course, that uh, uh, as the memory uh, was a problem, that was overcome by having online access. You could, we could expand the s scope of the index much more easily, and we didn't have to print out such huge books as we did before. So uh, it gave you great f flexibility in searching. That's one of the great advantages. Well, I don't know that anybody has done a, a really comprehensive study of the differences between what people published in the 50 years ago <laughs> compared to today. But I, I imagine that uh, references are much more accurate these days. In the old days, there were a lot of errors that we had to actually try to correct uh, ourselves or through various algorithms that uh, Dr. Schur developed. But uh, uh, clearly, uh, uh, published papers today are, uh, I think, far more accurate in their citations than they were before. A lot of people will question that, but um, the, ex the size of the bibliographies has probably increased. And in general, uh, there's, a, there's a citation consciousness that didn't exist back then. That's what I always refer to as, as citation consciousness, whether people are aware uh, that they need to do searches or need to verify uh, the, the papers that they cite. Well, it means that within that people are aware that they need to document the claims of what they're citing, what they refer to, and uh, hopefully they would go back to the original papers. But uh, just being aware that being cited was important to people. It was a kind of Dr. Merton referred to this as the currency of of uh, scholarship that paying tribute to people was one thing, and citing the relevant literature was very important. I can't predict uh, how it's going to evolve. It's, uh, it's a question of uh, how people make use of it. There's already so many different ways in which manip to manipulate citations, to do co-citation analysis, to develop clusters, uh, develop mapping and so on, and it goes way beyond what I, I what our group has done. It's now a worldwide uh, topic. 
the field of bibliometrics is enormous. I mean, there, there are probably uh, 20 or 30 papers a week published now of one, one kind or another involving citation analysis or bibliometrics. So uh, uh, I, I think that the emphasis will probably be on the use and modification of citation analysis for evaluating uh, individuals, their impact, their personal impact, group impact, universities' impact. Thank you.